Hoffman, the President of the United States. Thank you all very much. I appreciate that. And I'm pleased that you're here because I think in large part one of the things underlying the program upon which you've been briefed and are going to continue to be briefed today uh, is the balance between state and federal and, and local government. And I think that balance is the key to economic recovery in our country and recovery of a lot of other things that you have to deal with every day. You know what's best for your states. You know what's best for your communities. You are the closest to the people. You hear them. And we in this administration want a partnership with you. And I think with such a partnership, there'd be no limit to what we can accomplish. We need your help in getting the consolidation of categorical grants into block grants. Granted, there are going to be reductions in the budget, as you've been told. But I think if you are given the flexibility uh, to use those in those block grants in your judgment, the way they should be, set your priorities, that I don't think that you will feel the pain of those cuts as much as maybe somebody in the bureaucracy up here is going to going to feel them. Now I know that this afternoon you're, that's going to be the subject that you hear, so I'm not going. Into, get into great detail about it. There is one other thing that I think you, if you haven't heard today, that you would be interested in is our task force on regulations. So far, more than a hundred of them have been targeted for elimination, and more than a third of that hundred will remove the restrictions that are presently imposed on local and state uh, government entities. And having been in state government myself, I've got some experience with. Uh, some of those regulations and restrictions and the additional paperwork that they they call for. You know what's happening in the country. You're closer to the people, and you hear the cry of the people for some reform. We hope that we'll soon have, I'm hoping anyway, I know you've, Don Regan has spoken to you this morning already about it, but I hope that very shortly we'll have a bipartisan tax policy similar to the Graham Latta bill, that um, one that we can all go forward together on. One last point here, Senator Paul Laxalt is chairing a task force and an advisory committee, chairing both of them, and they're on federalism. This, if we'll only look at it, is the secret of America's success. We're unique in all the world in that we were set up to be a federation of sovereign states with as much law as possible kept at the local level. Now, you know, you hear a lot of jokes every once in a while about silent Cal Coolidge, but I think the joke is on the people that make jokes, because if you look at his record, he cut the taxes four times. We had probably the greatest growth in prosperity that we've ever known, and I have taken heed of that, because if he did that by doing nothing, maybe that's the answer that the federal government better <laughs> I have a quote, 1926, from Cal Coolidge. He said, no method of procedure has ever been devised by which liberty could be divorced from local self-government. No plan of centralization has ever been adopted which did not result in bureaucracy, tyranny, inflexibility, reaction, and decline. Of all forms of government, those administered by bureaus are about the least satisfactory to an enlightened and progressive people. Being irresponsible, they become autocratic. And being autocratic, they resist all development. Unless bureaucracy is constantly resisted, it breaks down representative government and overwhelms democracy. It is the one element in our institutions that sets up 
the pretense of having authority over everybody and being responsible to nobody. Now, I know the time is limited and that we can have some dialogue at least here before they grab me. Mr. President, uh, Joe Malone from the Board of Penn City, Board of New Jersey. And much has been said about the uh, possibility of a uh, national warfare program. Uh, will the administration be getting involved in a national warfare program? This is, this is what we are hoping we can achieve. It was an experiment that we tried in California when we reformed welfare out there of getting the able-bodied welfare recipients to work at useful community projects in return for their welfare grants. And the way we operated it there, I don't know what the plans are that are going forward over uh, in Senator Schweiker's office now, but I know he's heart and soul in favor of this, support of it. What we did was they worked 20 hours a week, not 40. And we assigned representatives from the State Labor Department to them as what we call job agents. To, in other words, we did not want them as permanent. Boys, we started first by getting every element of local government, from school districts to communities, counties, whatever, to submit to us those things that, as we defined it, they would be doing if they had the manpower and the money, but which they were otherwise not able to do. In other words, don't invent, make work. And we screened all those to make sure they were le legitimate undertakings. Then these people sent for to go to work, report for work, and those projects. And the job agents watched them, and on the basis of what they saw, they actually acted as agents and went out and tried as quickly as possible to move them from those jobs into private enterprise jobs. And this was most successful in putting tens of thousands of people through that program out into private enterprise jobs at a time that unemployment was increasing in the 73-74 recession. There was another sideline benefit. Thousands of those people who were notified didn't report, and we stopped sending their checks, and we never heard from them again. <laughs> Good. Mr. President, I'm Bridget Brown from Calgary County, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, how do you propose to get fair treatment for, let's say, in, in a state like Ohio, where we have Cleveland, which is a very urban area, and you have rural areas, and if the black grants are going to come through the state, how do we get fair treatment? Well, again, I just have to feel that, and have faith that a state government uh, has got to uh, be fair in this or there will be a different state government. And uh, we haven't had an opportunity, I haven't had yet in the arranging of this program to talk about whether there would be any recourse uh, kept available for the federal government if, if someone tried unfair tactics. but. I've met with all the governors on this, and I know a number of them are very supportive. And I, I believe these are honorable men who are not going to let that, let that happen. They, they think they represent all the people. Thank you, Mr. President. Jim Moore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Mr. President, I have a question on civil liberty sharing. I feel, and I'm sure a lot of other local officials feel, that we should be helping ourselves like you do at the national level. At the same time, I think some of us are going to have to be prepared enough to know what's going to happen with regard to federal revenue sharing and whether it's going to be federal revenue sharing in the future or not. Well, you mean federal revenue sharing? You mean through by way of the block grants that we're talking about? Let me tell you, we need your help because this is going to be probably one of the most difficult of all the parts of our reform program to bring about. There is a great reluctance on the part of the federal government uh, to trust the people out there, and I. I believe that inhaling the fogs off the Potomac imparts a wisdom that is not generally shared. <laughs> but um, um, we are going to need help to, to get that. There's a reluctance to give up that authority. I have to tell you that I think the block grants, my long distance dream is that the block grants are an only an, uh, a bridge that the real ultimate goal should be to transfer the actual sources of taxation to state and local government. Gary Phelan, Mr. President, and I'd like to thank you for this, uh, this afternoon here and appreciate the administration's effort 
in their deregulation program and the bureaucracy that causes so many problems uh, on counties and municipal governments. Thank you, Senator. Well, thank you. Mr. President, this is just a little change in the procedure here, but one of our constituents in Tinkman County, New Jersey, wrote a poem, and I think we might have sent it to you, and I said I was going to read it, but I got the opportunity. <laughs> Faith in a dream is all that we need to carry us on like a galloping steed. With eyes to the future, let us pray, God bless America and the American way. Andrea Lippia wrote this for Cape May County, and I'd like oh. you to have it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, and I, I agree. This country started with a dream. The lady, I, I, well, you next. Okay, <laughs> Mr. President.